What's up, everybody? It's your killer boy here, Boris at your College of Design Studio, and let's get right into the tutorial. We're not gonna waste any time, guys. Let's jump right in. Today, we're going to package a Python application as a Windows executable. Why? Because we don't want our end users or customers to be messing around with scripts, packages, managers, downloads, and any other kind of stuff. Right, we want to give them one file, they click it and it runs. That's it. Let's take a look. The, here are the steps that we're going to perform today. We're going to install Python for Windows. The latest version is 3.6. All of the links and everything I'm talking about is going to be down below in the description of this video. The second step is to install Pywin32. That is the second prerequisite. For the final and third component, which is PyInstaller. Now PyInstaller is what actually bundles our Python application and all of its dependencies into a single package. The user can then run the package application without installing Python interpreters or any modules, which makes it easy for them. Guys, a very important update before I continue and I'll put everything in the beginning of the video uh, as an overlay, but make sure you get Python 3.5, not Python 3.6. Again, Python 3.5 is what you want, guys. Pi Installer 3.2.1 is not compatible with Python 3.6. Again, not compatible. So make sure you head on over to the correct site, get Python 3.5.3 or the latest stable release, and then under Python for Windows on PyWin32, get uh, the PyWin32 Pi 3.5. Get those and install those instead. And now we're not going to take the default options, or at least I'm not, guys. I don't want to install the launcher for all users. Let's make it easy on ourselves. I'm only going to be the only one using this program. So let's uncheck this and I don't want to install. Now look at this path. See users, my name, app data, local programs, Python, Python 36. That's not fun. No one wants that. So let's customize the installation. We're going to select all the rest of these programs and features. We do want pip, right? We install pip so we can download other Python packages and that will become important later on when we're trying to get Pi installer. Uh, now uh, we're going to leave this unchecked for all users. Next, we're going to add Python to our environment variables. And if you want debugging symbols and binaries, go ahead and get them, especially if you have Visual Studio 2015. Okay, so we're going to change this to something very simple. Are you ready? C Python 3.6, that's it. And no more messing around with any paths or anything crazy like that. So we're going to install it and I'll see you when we're done. All right, guys, we're all done. Setup was successful. Now there's one more thing. I'm not going to click on disable path link limit. If you have specific needs, go ahead and click that. But for me, that's not necessary. So we're going to go ahead and close this and move on to the second uh, component that we need, the second prerequisite, which is PyWin32. So we're, I'm going to double click on this. Next, here we'll take the default options. As you can see, Python 3.6 is required and it did find it in the registry because we installed it in a previous step. Very easy, Python directory is C Python 3.6. And then we are going forward on the next and install. I'll see you when it's done. That's it guys, that's it for the second component. I'm gonna click finish here. And now let's take a look, only one step remains. We need to install Pi Installer and we're going to do that through pip. Before we install Pi Installer guys, let's take a quick look at the documentation and the commands that we need and how to do it. So let's take a look. This is the Pi Installer manual. You can take a quick glance at some of the options that it has, how to use it on your specific environment. What we really need is this command right here, pip install Pi Installer. And we need to execute this from the scripts folder of where our Python is installed. And if only we had installed Python in a simple directory, but now let's, we have to search so far and so deep into the roaming directory. Wait, oh, the, the, well, there it is. Python 3.6, scripts, and right here is pip.exe. Now, quick shortcut, you may be aware of this already, but if not, it's pretty useful. Just click on your address bar, type in CMD, enter, and right there we have a command line on the direct path of where we invoked it. And so now I'm going to do pip install pi installer. And you might be asking, do we need to specify a version? Do we need to check anything? No, let's hit enter. 
and that should be it. It it should automatically find the latest compatible installation and, and put it in a correct place. So Python 3.6, lib, site packages, and pi installer. So I'll see you when it's done. All right, now we're done with pi installer and we're going to write some code and package it as an application for Windows. You can use any IDE that you guys want. You can use PyCharm, whatever you guys want. In this video, I want to show you a nifty feature of Microsoft's tool for Visual Studios that include Python. And what we have here is the latest version of Visual Studio. Make sure you get all the updates, especially for the Python tools for Visual Studio. There was an update that came in January of 2017, so make sure you grab that before you get started. So we're going to create a new project. We'll do new file, new project, and then Python application. It's just a test application, nothing serious. So I'm just going to call it my Python app. And this is a command line application. So we're going to hit OK. I'm going to save you the headache, guys. Before we even start writing any code, we need to configure our Python environment. The chances are, if you've just installed Python, you're not going to see anything populate here on the left side where it says Python environments. And that is because um, when looking into the registry, Visual Studio does not recognize the interpreter. A restart might fix this or it might not. If it doesn't, you're going to have to get your hands a little dirty. So let's take a look here. If we try to add a Python environment, it doesn't show anything. And if we go online to look for resources, let's take a look. It will tell you some actually pretty useful information about uh, installing Python interpreters, how to configure them, and we're going to go through these steps right now to create one. Let's click cancel here and then view all Python environments. Right click, view all Python environments. Then we're going to click the plus icon for custom and I'm going to call it environment one and one. For some reason I, I just I don't like spaces and our easy path C Python 36 select folder and now we don't have to manually type in the rest we can just click auto detect it'll fill in the rest and we'll apply so now when we close this and go back we see under Python environments we have our env1 setup let's write some code I'm going to create a quick number guessing game where I'm going to prompt the user to enter a number randomly generated between 0 and 100 and I'm going to give them five attempts to guess the correct number. So let's see how this works. First we're going to, I already have the program written over here uh, to make sure that it works. Um, right now let's import the random library. So from random import random integer. We're going to prompt the user for their name so name equals uh, the input function and then to save time I'm just going to copy and paste these strings and then we're going to print hello name so let's test this enter your name Boris hello Boris okay so far so good now let's generate uh, a random number rand number equals um, rand int and it takes two parameters uh, int a and int b and it returns a random integer in the range a to b uh, and, and as you can see it includes both endpoints so if we want to include from 0 to 100 we do this um, okay and now I'm just going to add a comment here because we're going to do a for loop and some of the idiosyncrasies of Python are throwing me off like the spaces. I'm used to seeing the brackets so I know exactly where things begin and end uh, and some of the formatting and s syntax of for loops uh, and the language in general are a bit different. So here we're going to do for the number in the range uh, start, end, and step. So we want to start at 5, end at 1, and decrement by one. We don't want to start at four and zero because most users are not familiar with zero-based indexing. So let's do five, one, negative one, and then colon here. And let's see. I want to print the number of tries they have remaining so that they're aware of what's happening. And then 
I want to prompt them for the number. I'll need to explicitly cast it to an integer, right? We're receiving input from the user via the command line, and we want to make sure that we uh, create an integer object. And I also want to read input from the command line. Let's close all these parentheses so that we don't get twisted up at the end. Now, unlike the print statement, we can't do string comma variable, like num. What we have to do, it only takes one string. So let's do this. And let's say, we want to say the name. So these brackets will replace, will be replaced by the variable we input in here. We'll see how that works in a second. Um, guess the, let me copy this, guess the number between zero and 100. And then we do dot, and we see all, the IntelliSense is already finding everything for us. We can do uh, format, and we're entering in name. So we want to prompt them again. Uh, we're telling them you have X number of tries, guess the number between zero and 100. So if the number is between, uh, it was greater than 100 or less than zero, it's an invalid number. Then we'll check if the number is too high, if it's too low, or if it's the exact number that the user chose. Now, I'm just gonna skip ahead in the interest of time. This is the rest of the program. You can take a look at the code and I'll make it available down below. But basically, this is it. That's all she wrote. We use elif instead of else if. A lot of languages spell it out, else, else space if. Python does not. That's another idiosyncratic uh, difference there. And now, we want to make sure that we go five, four, three, two. It's not gonna go to one, it'll just end there. And so let's make sure that we go zero here. And let's start. Boris, you have five tries remaining. I'll choose 50, number's too high. Let's go 25. I'm cutting it in half each time. 25 is too high again. So let's go 13. Number is too high. Let's go seven. Number is too high. Really? Let's go three. Wow, okay. <laughs> we got lucky there. I could have chosen like two, one, or anything else. But at the very end, we guessed it. That's it, guys. It works exactly as we expect, um, at least for our purposes. You know, five, four, three, two, one guesses. And congratulations, we guessed the right number. And then we exit. Now, let's save this code and then run a Pi installer to create an executable. I'm going to open up PowerShell and I've already changed directories to Python 35 scripts. Let me show you why. That is where pyinstaller.exe resides. We need to use that to build the standalone version of our Python script. So I'm going to need the location of my .py file and let me invoke installer. Make sure there are no spaces in your path, guys. And add the name of the file. Let's see here, my Python app.py. Now, very important, if you want this to be a standalone executable, again, if you want this to be a standalone executable, you need to add the dash F flag. Otherwise, it won't be, and you're going to have some issues, at least I ran into issues where I would click on the executable, it would flash on the screen really quick and then disappear. Even if I tried to create it or run it as an admin, it still did that. Now, only with the F switch does it create a standalone um, application. The difference is if you build it without, it will pull, put all of your resources under um, this path, Python 35 scripts slash build. And then you'll see my Python app that, um, folder with an exe in there, which for me didn't work. If you use the dash F switch, it creates a standalone executable, which does work. And it puts it under this path slash dist for distribution, which is what we're looking for. So let's go ahead and hit this. Okay, it said it completed successfully. I'll be the judge of that. Let's take a look. I'm now in the build directory. And you can see my Python app. We don't want that, we want distribution. And if we go here to my Python app, it works. It's an executable and it is exactly what we said, too, too high, 25, too low. 
38, too high, too low. So between 30 and 38, 34, we didn't get it, that's fine. But you can move this anywhere. Now you can take this uh, executable, put it on your desktop, run it from there, email it, whatever you want, you can distribute it. And the person on the other end, all they need to have is the Windows operating system and they click it and they're good to go. No Python installations, no packages, nothing. Uh, no interpreters. And we are done, guys. That's it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time on an Arcology Designs production.